for coming to the June virtual studio open studio visit. I have my pile of things here to show you. <laughs> um, you know, I thought it was really uh, interesting, you know, the way when I said I was going to do this, it was like how my kit has evolved over the years for the, the smallest thing I can take with me. And, you know, that's usually when, you know, I'm traveling and I know I'm not really going to have a lot of time to paint at all. So I want to keep everything really small and efficient. Or, you know, if I'm, uh, you know, just going out for an afternoon and, you know, I, I'm not planning on bringing all my plein air stuff. So uh, some of the tools that are here are going to be for making your uh, little mini uh, pastel kit, which truthfully can be adapted to other mediums. It's the inside of it that you change. So uh, if you're not a pastel painter, you know, watercolor, oil, acrylic, you know, it, it's, the same, it's the same idea. The difference is going to be in what we do on the inside of these boxes uh, so that the pastels are protected because that's, that's what you always wanna do. You wanna make sure your pastels are protected. So I'm just going to stand over here, just going to show you a couple of things. There's a, a couple of boxes that actually come already set up for, um, you know, that could be used as a plein air box. So I brought this one out just as an example. These are the hair bands that I put around. They're really sturdy. This one has extra grippy on it. So it holds the box tight. And this is a very old box. I never got rid of it. And it already has the um, swing top, not a, a, a typical top, and it already has all the slots. So this one is just more of a curiosity so that I can show you that sometimes a kit, uh, a pastel box comes with, uh, you know, really almost ready for a plein air kit. So I'm glad I saved that because I've had that for a really, really long time. I'm just going to put that aside. That's Great American. You guys know that I really like uh, Great American. Okay, the boxes I'm going to show you, one of them is just a cardboard box. It is a hinge lid. I'm going to explain that. The other one that I'm going to show you is a cigar box. And again, it has a hinge lid so that, you know, gives us a little bit more flexibility with pastels. In order to turn these boxes into something suitable for uh, an art kit, a travel kit, you're going to need uh, duct tape, a ruler, a pair of scissors, an X-Acto knife. Well, that's for packaging. That's for packaging. That's for packaging. That's for packaging. And um, foam core. I tend to use black foam core, uh, but white foam core uh, works well too. And that's the foam core board. It's a little uh, sturdier. Gator board would work out fine too. Gator board has a sturdier outside surface. You couldn't push your nail. You couldn't actually push a, a tack through a, a gator board e and, um, easily at all. So that would work too. And then just to show you one of the things, this is from Joanne Fabric. Uh, and this I've had for a while, and this is just foam. You can get it in different densities. This is a pretty uh, pliable foam. So uh, this one's probably about a half an inch thick, but I'll show you what's inside the boxes so you'll see. So of course, your ruler, your scissors, your X-Acto blade are for cutting your foam and for cutting your uh, gator board or your um, foam core. Now, another thing some of you might want to use, I did not have to use it, and I'll, I'll mention that, is a, a hot glue gun. Okay, so you, you might need that depending on what kind of box you have that you're going to try this with. Okay, so now that we know the basic tools, and if I forgot something, I'll just fill that in. Lots of these, these little guys are great. These little, you're going to be using those. Okay, all different sizes. Those are great. I'm gonna put that to the side. That has more to do with what goes in the kit than actually making it. So I'm going to just uh, switch gears just a little bit, just so you can see the end of the evolution here. 
And the end of the evolution for me was actually um, buying a ready-made one from Heilman. Okay, and this is one of the things that I've not been able to recreate on either of my boxes. But if you're handy, uh, you certainly could put some sort of a, a, a bar that actually holds the back up and you'll see how that works. Now with your box, what you wanna do is you wanna get these little sticky things and put them all over your box when you take your box someplace. Although I tell you, they're getting harder and harder to find. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have had trouble uh, buying these. Okay, so the way this one works, okay, and this is why the hinge is important with the box that you're going to make, is that you can bend it to a 90 degree or slightly uh, less, okay? The way this one works is this back here stops it from lying flat. And this is the thing I've not been able to figure out how to recreate because I'm just using Inix. I can't put this sort of a hinge on a, a cardboard. I can't use this kind of a hinge on the, the thin cigar boxes. So um, I'll give you some suggestions of what you can do if uh, you have a box that lies flat. Okay, so the way this one works, and this one just uh, is, I think it's $165 now. I've had it for several years. This actually comes out. This is their half uh, uh, sketch box. This fits in here. Your papers fits in this very small little um, uh, dust catcher. What I tend to do is bring my own board because I like to work a little bit bigger. And I put it here. Let me flip it like that. This is a uh, glassine to keep the paintings fresh. And I use a bungee cord to attach that so that this stays right on there and you can adjust the back. It is amazing how many pastels will actually fit in here. Trick, regardless of whether you have a store-bought one or you make your own is you don't need full sticks, okay? The other thing is the majority of these that stay in this box, not all of them, but the majority of them are Geralt's. And Geralt's just by nature are thinner. Now, let me put it up here. You can see it a little better. They're a thinner stick. Uh, they're not, not anywhere near as hard as a new pastel. Uh, and they have a fabulous selection of, of colors. You can buy them in, you know, the, those... I uh, like desert colors or landscape colors or portrait colors, or you can just buy, you know, just a uh, general basics. Uh, and this is about half of a stick. So I can fit a lot of colors in here and then I supplement it with a few half, half sticks. <laughs> so these aren't even half a stick, that's a quarter of a stick. And um, this works out, this works out really well. I can get a lot in here. And because uh, it is a Heilman box, I feel like I'm advertising for them, but because this is, this is like um, a puzzle or Jenga or something like that. Something's gonna happen if it goes in the wrong spot is it's got the memory foam under here. So I can get a lot in, they stay secure. This sits over it, press down, move the hinge and hold it. The reason I'm showing you this first is so that you understand why some of the things that I'm doing in the self-made box um, are important to keeping your pastels ready, but then also giving you an area to work. Any questions on the, the home in box? Uh, Betsy, it's Deborah. Where do you keep the key for that box? Uh, well, I don't lock it, so I don't, um, I don't, that's a, that's an excellent question. I have no idea where the key is. <laughs> I, I I don't know. Uh, I mean, this is a really sturdy lock, so there's no way it's going to pop open on its own. Unless, no, you know, there's something that's goofing around. If I'm traveling by plane, no matter what box I have with me, mm -hmm. this is my smallest, and then I have one that's a little bit bigger. It goes uh, in carry-on with me. The one that's slightly bigger really is just both sides have the pastels. It might be slightly bigger than that, actually, now that I'm thinking of it, but it's uh, not the backpack size. I believe it's called the double sketch box or well, I don't know what it's called now that I think of it. But uh, either way, it's um, 
sturdy. You can still use these guys. I mean, they are fabulous. I mean, after a while, they do start to uh, lose their elasticity. So mm -hmm. then they become a little bit, but they're, they're really taut. This would fit nicely around here. So this is, this is the end game. Why go spend $165 if you're not sure how much you're going to use it? Or uh, if you're even going to uh, like the sun. Oh, I'm going to show you this. This when you're traveling by plane, make sure even if you have it on carry on that you have your um, identifying information on there. And uh, it is often suggested, although we use the word pastels and we usually cringe at the word chalk, more people know the word chalk. So especially when you're going through, um, you know, customs there uh, or uh, security. So, excuse me, uh, the word chalk is identifiable so that they, under they understand what is exactly inside of it. And if you have your box with you when you travel uh, on an airplane, you're the one who's opening it up to see what's to show what's inside of it if you are asked about it, as opposed to being in your luggage and someone being not sure about it. I mean, I don't really know any stories about that, but that's just a precautionary um, bit of advice with that one. So I'm going to put this guy over to the side. Oh, Betty, just... Betsy, what are the approximate dimensions of, of that box? This oh, box okay. here is uh, just over nine inches uh, uh, by seven, and okay. it is uh, just shy two inches deep. So it's okay. not a big box, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's it's pretty lightweight. I mean, it's got the pastels actually are what adds up the weight of your pastel box a lot of the time. Um, again, really sturdy in uh, construction. So nine by seven by two is a rough way of uh, saying that. So this is what we want to do. We want to create something that uh, is affordable uh, while you figure out whether or not it is worth spending $165 on it. Uh, of course, if you find it secondhand, it's definitely worth it. So I'm just telling you that. <laughs> okay, I'll do the um, cigar box first. Again, this. There's no way to shut or lock this. Okay, so you definitely need some sort of strap bungee. I mean, you could even put, um, you know, bungee straps around it if you wanted to. I just find these are very handy. And uh, you could you could double them up. You could, you know, crisscross them, you know, put multiple but ones. Yes? Where do you get the, I, I probably missed that, but where do you get those large bands? Oh, you know what? A dollar Street uh, dollar store. Uh, I've gotten some of them. The most recent one that was really thick like that. This one yeah. I just got over at the grocery store. Really? And in, in yeah. what department? Like in like the hair department? Yeah, or? where they sell shampoo, you know, okay. combs, brushes, all that, cool. all that hair stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. I mean, they are, Thank you. Truthfully, I'll be quite honest. Black's my least favorite color because I always wow. think black is it goes into the hole of God knows where it is and I can't find it. If this was right. bright pink, I'd be able to find it really easy. So um, I guess the only ones I had hanging on the doorknob are the, the black ones, but I do try to buy the colored, the colorful ones. It's the yeah. same with my little clips and things. I try to use ones that are bright and colorful um, so that I can see them inside of a bag. Okay, yeah. so you're- Thank you. No, no trouble. Okay, so these you can, if you've got a cigar, I bought several years ago for one of my classes, we made these and um, I believe, um, well, not I believe, at the time we had a cigar shop in Mashpee and I just went in and I think I had to pay $5 for each of them or something like that. I did explore and you can buy cigar boxes online, uh, and clearly empty. And um, I mean, unless you smoke cigars, <laughs> this, is a, this is a twofer, you get the cigars and you get the box. But um, nice, sturdy uh, exterior, which is what you want. It's not the... Um, None of the cigar boxes I recall uh, being um, particularly, um, I don't know if the well, word well built is the right word, but it's this hinge here. This is, this is what makes it so appealing because you want to have a hinge like that. And it's actually called a 90 degree, um, oh, a 90 degree, I wrote it down. Just a second, let me look over here. 
Yeah, it's called a 90 degree stop hinge. And the reason it's called the stop hinge is because it goes just so far, oops, let me move this, just so far and it stops. It does not lie flat. Remember that um, this box here, open it up and it lies totally flat. Okay, so, you know, there's nothing you can do. Well, if you were very clever, yes, there's probably something you could do to put a stop hinge on the back of a cardboard box. But, um, so that's what you want to do. You want to have that hinge so that it uh, actually opens like that. Betsy? Yes? I, I was just going to say that I've made a little box out of... Um one of those little balsa wood boxes that you can just buy at Michael's or oh, right. probably Joanne's too. It, it's a little bit like that, but it has, um, it lies flat and the lid is also, you know, you could put stuff in the lid too. Oh, okay. Because it has so an it's edge going all to it. One of the craft stores and looking at the types of boxes. So if you, if and you do they're that, very cheap, they're yeah. usually unfinished, but you know, I oh, just yeah. put on some stain and that we had around the house. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So as we go along, since you've, you've done one, uh, make sure interject any suggestions you had from doing your own box too. Okay, March. Okay. Okay. So, so there you go. You want, uh, you know, looking for that. It does, if it doesn't have its uh, 90 degree stop hinge, you can buy it and you can put it on here. One of the reasons this one does is because when this flips closed, I don't know if you can see it, this part right here goes and makes the back of the box as opposed to there being an actual back right here. See that? It's a little shorter back here. So this fits right into there and it closes totally flat. Now, what I tend to do with this one is, is I've made my own hinge for opening and closing with uh, duct tape. And this has probably been in he on here for, I don't know, six, seven, eight years. Um, you know, I haven't used it a lot in probably the last four years, but uh, this has worked out well. And the reason I had that is so that, you know, I had a way that I could open up the box without trying to get my fingers up underneath it, a nice little hinge. Also have a couple of the silver small um, uh, clips here that you'll see you wind up you can wind up using them for your paper. So if you're making a cigar box, what you want to do for a start is whether this is gator board or foam core, you want to cut a piece that fits in to the interior, does not wobble around, and taking into consideration the fact that this back lip actually fits there. Now, if you don't have a lip like I do here, then you would just have it the exact same size. But it's really just trial and error, and that is where your exacto blade and your ruler come from. You're off by a short amount, you just trim it again. This actually can then become your backing for here. Let me just move this forward a little bit. Could be your backing for your paper. So you don't necessarily have to put your paper on this. Uh, you can also use larger sizes here. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. And what you wanna do, it's, this is all going to be based on the depth of your box. Cigar boxes uh, that are a one tier cigar box. I don't know if they make two tiers, but I'm thinking maybe they do. A one tier cigar box is about the right size for most pastels, which is really kind of handy. So I've got a thin sheet of foam that's here because that thicker foam that I showed you that I was using for the other box is just too thick. It's gonna take up too much, but look at this. What a great way of using those um, uh, foam separators that come in past in the pastel boxes when you buy them. So this, they just fit in there really nicely. It is amazing how much pastel, how many pastels, just one second, I've got something that's right in my way. So I'm just gonna move that to the side. How many, so I can double layer these up. Now, part of the problem of double layering up these guys is because they're so small, I don't see what's underneath. So you have to keep moving things around. Your uh, 
thicker pastels, your Terry Ludwigs, your Unison Great Americans, uh, you can again take, it's not even a half stick, and you can put them like this. So that what you're doing is, is you're looking at the colors from top down, and that's the easiest way to see them. These guys, there's not much we can do with our thinner ones, whether they would be Geralt or whether they would be um, uh, new pastels is they do have to, they do have to lie flat because coming straight up. Now there's another piece of this thin foam, which my guess is came in um, packaging of some sort. And of course I save packaging and all different sorts of things. Uh, the only kind of bubble wrap that I would use or I would suggest you use are the one that has the very small um, bubbles in it because what will happen is the larger that bubble wrap is, the less your pastels are going to be lying flat. And what you really want is you want these pastels to be tucked right in. Now, clearly I'm not using this box anymore, so it's not filled, but I want these guys to be tucked in so there's no wiggle room in here. So I will fill up each of these. Pastels and traveling, the biggest issue is going to be listening to them rattle around when you pick them up. So if you make sure foam underneath, they've got these lovely little foam separators that you just took out of a box of pastels that is now empty. Don't throw them out. Foam that goes on top, this that goes on top. And by the time you do all that, now, I, I'm not going to flip mine up upside down because I know they're going to rattle around. There's too many uh, empty spots in there. They're not going to go anywhere. Now, extra spot over here. You know, I've got my little um, glove. I have a smaller pencil. I got another one of these emergency clips in here. Uh, needed eraser and a rubber band. And the reason the rubber banding comes in handy is Let's say if I'm working up here, let's put this guy down for a minute. I'm working here. I can clip this. Oh, geez, you can't see it. I'm going to have to go like that. I did trial run uh, trying to figure out how on earth I was going to. Oh, guys, these guys are too small. What did I? Oh, I must have just had a sheet of paper on there. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take these off because this is not going to do what I would do nowadays. And to use this larger one. This one's slightly larger than that. Okay, this is where I would be putting my. Okay, well, I guess that one's not large enough. Okay, well, for lack of anything else wrong, I'm just going to use this big guy right here. Okay, he's clipped on here. Lying flat in the back, leave him up in the front so my paper is going to go here. What I could do down here as a Dutch a dust catcher is what I uh, tend to do is use cardboard. Cardboard's going to be too uh, heavy. So, and that was something I forgot to pull out to show you guys. But let me just grab a, sh let me just grab this right here. You could take a paper towel and you could fold it so that it goes. Underneath. Flip it back in. Okay, there's your dust catcher right there. It's not going to go into your box. And at the end, you just uh, take it and fold it up and throw it out. Uh, you know, with this sort of setup, you really want everything to be pretty darn efficient. This, uh, this is not, this is a small size. I believe this here is roughly, uh, uh, this is an eight by seven, I think. Yeah, eight by seven. Let's say I need to, it's, uh, you know, need to get it even uh, more sturdy, more sturdy. I don't think that's what it's sturdier than uh, rubber band can come down and can hold the bottom. Okay. So what would happen is, is whether it's holding the paper down, which you certainly could do it like that, or whether it's kind of a windy day and you're catching a little bit of wind coming around the sides. These guys are pretty darn sturdy. I mean, you could have multiple ones. I tend to rely on the bulldog clips to actually keep everything uh, secure. Now, remember the box I showed you that I paid for. That one had the hinge that came down, which helped hold this up. With this sort of a box, you do need to hold this because what you don't want to do is you don't want to keep pressing on it so much. These little hinges back here will just kind of come loose. Uh, so you, you do have to hold it. 
Another thing you could do is depending on where you're painting, you could put something up behind it, uh, even if it's your backpack or your purse, something so that this is leaning on it. But the beauty is, is it's not going flat, so you don't have to constantly hold it. Uh, some people may like to do this, put this on the side, and you're actually just holding the corner of this. You're just, let me move it like that. You're just holding your clip, okay? And that way, that's why these guys are so handy. <laughs> that way, it's not going to uh, flip back, and it's a little less, um, well, not that the energy that you need for holding it is really that much greater than just holding this, but it feels a little bit more relaxing just holding this little clip right here. Okay, the other thing that um, for long lengths of time when I used to, and I also used to take this, this one out on the boat with me and paint from the boat is those um, gel throwaway, do not eat packets. Oh, where'd, where'd I go? Right in here I am. Okay, they're handy for any place where your uh, materials may be um, in a little bit of humidity or you're leaving them someplace where it's humid so that silica, uh, silica gel uh, helps with the humidity. And again, at the end, you're just packing everything up. Okay, Where, wherever that uh, went to, who knows? Actually, in this guy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him in here. Oops, nope, I'm probably going to need him for the other one, so I'm not, but I could. He would fit in there. You're all finished. Take this, close it up. So like that, and then I can get my band around it, and I can have multiple bands on it so that it definitely doesn't open up. Any any questions about this or any suggestions? Is there anything anybody's seen with? Oh, I forgot to put the other thing on it. Oh, and this is why it's important having that cushion on the top or the bottom. That's what you want next to your pastels. Betsy, yes. I'm quite a fan of uh, stick-on Velcro, which would work okay. to seal it, which would yeah. work to seal it um, in a few places. How, however, you know, it depends upon what your needs were. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, stick-on yes, Velcro yeah. would work. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you could, uh, you know, crafty, clever people that we are, we could come up with uh, a whole load of different ideas. One thing that I did, so that the Velcro, sure, that did work out, that would work out nicely. Whatever you do, you just want to make sure that this is totally flat. You don't, you, you want, you don't want anything that's going to be pushing that lid up because it's the security of the foam, the uh, pastel dividers that you took from a pastel box, another piece of thin foam, and your uh, foam core layers that's keeping that so that nothing in there moves around. Okay. Yes, so I, would, I would use the Velcro where you have the duct tape to close okay. it and, and open it. Okay. So you would like put it around the top like that or something? Yes. And with, yeah. with a receiver okay. part underneath yeah, yeah, and you yeah. could just strap it shut. That's good. Yeah. And if someone has like a little, um, a drill, you know, I mean, this is just like an inexpensive plywood, so I don't know if it would um, split or not, but you could put like a little hook unit on there. Um, I, I'm clever to a point <laughs> when it involves any sort of tools. I'm like the duct tape lady. I'm like the if oh, duct tape works. and clips that work. Who was it, so, MacGyver? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Give me duct tape. So, um, so that takes care of this uh, this kit, okay? And again, you can buy these if you don't uh, if you don't have a box that has those ninety degree uh, stop hinges. So we put this guy to the side. Okay, now this one is just with a regular box. Oh, and here's one of my colorful ones. Okay, and this is just a, you know, I have I have boxes that I just saved that I think I'm going to use sometime. And this one, I think wind chimes came. Yeah, wind chimes came in this box. And let me just move these things so we have a little bit more space here. Okay, the sort of box you want to be looking for is that does the same sort of thing, that hinge, okay? Um, because what happens is there's two things. One, 
uh, you don't have a lid that you put down and blows away or gets stepped on or any number of things. You've, it's all attached. It's a one unit thing. And again, this um, top lid here can act as your uh, uh, as part of your easel so that you're holding it. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna cut a piece of um, foam core that's the same size as the interior. What I did is I did the same sort of thing and I have a hinge on this so that if in fact it was, it didn't wind up being uh, difficult to get it out, but if I had put it in and it was a little bit too thick, I would have a hinge where I could just lift this up. Okay, this, this now becomes obsolete. Now, one of the things with the store-bought one, once you start taking it apart, you, you don't have loose things hanging around, you know, you because it's all self-contained. So now you have this that's loose. And this is where I use the thicker foam. And I use the thicker foam because of the style of this box. It is deeper than this box. It may not appear like it's much, but it's just because of the way it's made the cardboard is thinner, which means I don't lose, I lose uh, some of the height that was in the bottom of this. So this is where you double, you double check, okay? What kind of foam do I need? Don't need the thick foam here, I need the thick foam here. So I cut two pieces of thick foam. Like I said, I just got it from a craft shop. Now here, ooh, just let me show you this for a minute. Okay, foam foam. This goes in here. I'm just going to do this for a second. Okay. There we go. All that foam in here. These guys didn't move around. Okay. That's what you're looking for. Either box. This one has the purpose made little cubbies, little dividers. They're not going to move around if you make sure they're all filled. This one here, this thicker foam that fits right in here. You're pressing down with this. Everything is snug. These guys don't move around. These, they're still in the same position that they were when I put them in there. Um, this box, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking at your pastels from the side. This one here, remember we, we are uh, half sticks. We stood up so that we could get them, uh, get more in here and that we could uh, see the colors from the side. This one, you don't have that same sort of thing. If we stood them up, they're too high for the box. So they need to lie flat and it's the foam that protects it with the uh, foam core board on top of it. And um, a similar sort of thing uh, with this, uh, in terms of your uh, pastels, you know, uh, anytime you take your pastels out, you know, kind of think of where you're going. I mean, summer's on the Cape, if you were going to be doing this, you know, uh, you, you'd want to have that selection of, you know, different values, but then also different temperatures, you know, you're cool and you're cool to warm. And then you'd also want to have your differences in intensity, those colors that are you know, really popping and, you know, highly chromatic, you know, that, that's uh, full of intensity compared to things that are a little bit duller. So have a little nice selection. If you're traveling someplace, um, you know, look at some photographs if you've not been there before and just kind of get a feel for what kind of colors am I going to see in that landscape. Let's say it's a city or, you know, uh, that you're going to. I mean, the colors for that you're going to bring to do some painting, even if it's just, uh, you know, a small little um, studies, they're going to be very different than if you're doing something by the seaside or in the country. So always double check that. But this is, you know, and clearly you have enough uh, room to put things. Now, this, here we go. You're doing everything for space. Okay, unless you're going to be painting a ton, you don't need all this tape. Never use up the end of your roll of tape. Leave just enough so that what you can do is you can take it uh, in your little kit. So you've got a little small, uh, you know, well, it's not small. Clearly, we can put pastels in the middle of there. But we, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of tape left on there, enough for probably three or four paintings. And like I uh, told you before, I just hinge mine. 
So uh, this one here is pretty straightforward. Now, a couple of things with this is that one, this one here had the 90 degree stop hinge. Okay, all I needed was my little clip on the side and I could hold it and it would um, not move. Okay, and that helped. This one here, it's a little flimsier, even with this on it. So this is what you would do for this. Okay. Whatever size your box is. Okay, let's see what the, whatever um, width your box is here. Okay. This is nine and a half. Okay. This is 10. Okay, good. This is, I want to make sure this is the one I have. So let's just take this apart. I'll show you what I keep in here in a minute. Okay, what you want to do, you want to cut a piece of foam core. And I tend to like the eight by tens when I'm traveling to paint with, which is why I have these boards that are just over eight by 10. So I can use them with uh, my palm and easel. But this is what I used to use with um, my cigar box. Okay. The reason you have it a little bit bigger is because you want the edge of it to fit right in here and right there. Okay. And then when you put these guys on here and here, two things will happen. One, it's not going to fall forward. Two, it's got that same little where you can hold it here. And it doesn't move around because it's kind of sitting right in this little nook right there, little tiny. And it's not as much as this one because that had a different sort of back. This is just a flush hinge. That one um, was a dog leg hinge, so it was on an angle. But you can do the same thing there. Again, you're holding it. Another idea, let's say if you, you had a, uh, this makes it sturdy too. It helps, I mean, this is not very sturdy back here, okay? So this helps increase the sturdiness and that little hinge there. I did look and I and remember I tried it ages ago and I thought for today, I gave it another try. Whereas I tried putting like, um, oh God, what would you call it? Um, well, putting a, a ribbon that goes around the back and uh, you know, uh, attaching it with a glue gun and then uh, uh, either tack staple or glue gun it here so that I had this, my total loss for words. So that, of course I don't have the river down anymore. So it looks like this. Side so, brace, that's your side that? brace, side brace. Yeah. Side brace, so I'm doing a side brace like this. I'll tell you, I found it was really annoying. Okay, you might not, but what happened is, is I could never have a piece of paper bigger than this, <laughs> you know? And I don't know, that, that little side brace I found annoying, but you could do it. And like I said, I tried it with a, a ribbon and rather than cutting a ribbon for here and cutting a ribbon for there, for more stability, I had one ribbon that started here, went around the back, and it came out here so that what happened is, is I, I didn't have to worry about that extra tension on this side or on this side because everything was connected. And it was really just um, uh, uh, attaching the ribbon. So, and I say ribbon, it was, you know, like a, a, a quarter, I think it was a quarter inch, uh, not your wrapping paper ribbon, your uh, ribbon that you would have for uh, sewing or, um, uh, you know, that sort, probably a string at work, anything at all. So you can give that a try. And then that would eliminate a little of this, well, a lot of the flap here, because you would have your side brace on either, on either end. Okay. Hey, Betsy, Betsy. Yes, I, I was hoping you'd have the perfect solution to this problem, because <laughs> it's, it's the thing I haven't figured out yet about my box. But yeah, um, right. I, I have just taken mine and, you know, found something to prop it up against. Yes, yeah. Most of the time when I'm using it, either a rock or a flower pot or a, you know, one time I was painting out a window and I just propped it against the windowsill yeah. because I just haven't figured out any clever ways. I tried various things, but. Betsy, it's Deborah. 
could you punch a hole through the black, the corner in the black, and then the corner on the, the box, and then thread a secure ribbon and knot it, you know, you knot it on each, on the, on the back of it. Yeah, you, you, you could, yeah. And that, that's what I did with the ribbon that wrapped around the back and it, and it worked out fine. I just found it annoying having this ribbon here the whole time. And, yeah. and that was just my, um, you know, my personal preference. Yes. Is, is it there was something restricting about having the ribbon on the side for me, oh. but yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, I would say if you're going to try something like this and, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether you used, uh, you know, a hot glue gun, whether you used, uh, oh, yeah. you know, some sort of attack, the idea is you're just making, um, a, a brace so that this doesn't flop. Yes, and like I said. Yeah, so no, that would that would work out. That would work out too. I'm just using this as an example, although it's I wouldn't use this, but you know, if we imagine yeah. that that was um, uh, a ribbon or a string, a uh, rope or something. But that would definitely help. Uh, the one thing with that you have to uh, always bear in mind is with either of these, we're we're um, jerry rigging this for our own purposes. And what's happening is, is uh, a box like this isn't gonna last forever. It's just great, right. okay? Mm -hmm. So we'd like it to be able to be, um, you know, fill our needs, but I'd probably wind up, oh, look at that. <laughs> I, brought, I brought it down further. Maybe I forgot I did that. I'd still have to hold it, but it's not tipping over it quite as much. Hey, Betsy. Yeah. Well, have you ever tried? I have no idea how. Well, like you know, the when a a, a picture frame sits on a table, it has that yeah. folded back thing. Yes, folded yes, yes. back portion. I mean, an old frame. Have you ever tried removing one of those from no. an existing frame oh, you don't want anymore? Oh, that's a great idea. You may be hot yeah, so that you would it. have you would have that on the back here. Right, and it would be yeah. it need to be the proper you know, angle and length right. to make it work for you, but it would at least prop it up a little. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, that's an, another really good idea. Some sort of, you know, and then I even thought, you know, you can get those um, uh, book holders, you know, it's so like if you're reading a book and cooking or something, which I actually never yeah, do the right. two at the same time, but you know, you could, you know, some, something like that could probably be, Packed in this rise right here might be a problem for that though. But whatever you do, you know, the again, your past health truthfully, guess what? Let's say you couldn't figure out how to do it at all. There's your box. You've got this lovely kit, everything in it. And let me just move this here. You lean like this, and your painting is here, and you're working from here to here. So you're going like that instead of using it as an easel here. You can just lean your your board. Well, actually, you could lean your board like that too. Ooh, I hadn't thought of that. Look at that. You could lean your board like that. So anything at all. Here you go. If you are going to lean your board like this, uh, for anyone who's taking classes from me, this is this is what you have to bear in mind. Every once in a while, you need to have that paper towel out. Okay, you're painting on here, dust, 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 paint, 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 dust, dust, dust. Okay, you wanna knock that dust off because this sort of an angle, the dust is not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna stay right on your painting and you're just gonna be moving it all over the place. So you wanna knock that off, which is why I was trying to figure out some way where you would be working like that. Even that angle here, you know, ideally you want to work 90 degrees or a little bit this way, which would be, you know, more like 95 degrees. You want to have it so that it's going to fall off. I do tend to do it more of a, a 90 degree. But yeah, so, uh, you know, so here's a really great idea. If anyone decides to make these, uh, why don't you just uh, send, send a photo and tell us how you solve some of these additional problems. <laughs> So, so anyway, so I'm just going to do this in reverse now. I'm going to put my, my pieces in here. Okay, you got that in there. Do that. And I get my thicker foam right over the top. 
So for my purpose made, the one that's got the little hinge on it on the side, push it down, nice and sturdy, flat, flatten that there, come in, close it up. And here, nothing moving around. Okay, that foam's terrific. Okay, extra security. I bungee it. I could even bungee it again with the you know rubber bands or with actual uh, bungees. Now, <clears throat> this is what your packets look like. Okay, remember I said most of these are designed to be eight by tens or smaller. So what I have is. I have several packets, and depending on you know where I'm going, how long I'm going. Inside uh, each of these packets are you know four or five, you know three or four uh, sheets of paper that I've pre-cut different sizes, and I have these um, uh, plastic. Uh, oh my gosh, what are they called? Hang on a second. Let me just open the drawer here. This is them right here. Okay, crystal clear, crystal seal packets, and I have them in different sizes. So two things I'll have in one, it keeps my packets together. So here I can take this little, look at it, I got a nice little one going on there, all set to be painted. Okay, they fit in the, the smaller five by sevens. Then I've got my eight by tens, all different sizes, different colors of paper. I don't overfill them because what I do is when I finish the painting, it goes right back in to the, the crystal clear packet and the other papers that are in that uh, set are inside. Now, clearly if you're doing it like this, it is really only one painting on this side, one painting on that side. You know, you can't get multiple paintings in there because you're gonna wind up ruining them. The other thing you can do is, now this is a larger one because this one doesn't come out with these kits. It's for something else. I have pre-cut pieces of um, glassine. And actually these are the glassine that actually come with Castel Matte. I think they're the nine by 12s. Might be another brand too that does them. And when I do a painting, I just can attach it to the, foam core, put the a glassine over it, put the next one in, attach it to the foam core, put that over it. And I would have an identical sheet of this foam core that sits on top. And then I whip out my little trusty bungee, um, bungee clips and I clip them shut. So let me show you how this one, because it's gonna look identical. So this guy's traveling. So I'm gonna stick it here, stick it here. And this was just, just about fit here. Flip. Flip, okay. And that's nice and sturdy. And when you're traveling with pastels, it's movement, okay? One, by sticking the glass in, glassine on top of it, or by putting in one of these uh, crystal seal packs. You're, you have to go the additional step and make sure that however you've done it, this board is not going to move. So that's where these clips come in handy. I would not use the bungee for that because the bungee could move. It could come undone. These guys, once they're on there, you know, they're really super, super sturdy. So, um, so I'm, I'm set for all different sorts of paintings that I can do with this kit here. And that's crystal clear. Now, how do you uh, put all this stuff together? To tell you the truth, this last trip, again, foolish plastic that comes with everything. If I can figure out another reason to use it, I will. <laughs> so everything goes in a plastic bag. That's one thing you can do. Close it up, use those. Um, oh, did I already use them all up? Let me just take this one off. Get a stack of these, wrap this around, nice and sturdy inside there. Ziploc plastic bag. This is what goes out on the boat with me. So I've got all my little bits in it. So this kind of is a companion to, um, oh, if you look at, you know what? I probably wouldn't use this anymore because I've become 
a fan of these. And I have the package here. I think I've showed you this before. These are the training pads for dogs. So, uh, you know, my newsletter with me sitting there painting on the top deck, this is what was underneath it, okay? And if I had been using any, which I did not, uh, any alcohol or anything like that, well, I can't take alcohol abroad, so it would have to be water. I don't have to worry about making a mess anywhere. Let's say I'm sitting someplace and I'm working off of my lap, which I have done. This keeps my uh, clothing clean. Uh, if it's windy and you want to attach it down, it's got the little sticky things on it. So these uh, puppy pads are great. And this is why well, I'm saying that. I, so this towel that I would have used before is obsolete. I would take this out on the boat with me now. So I have that. I also, these are those non-skid um, pieces of foam. I use them all over the place. They're usually used for um, uh, under carpets, things like that, inside your shelving units, uh, drawers. Uh, this one, when I'm out on the boat, goes down first. Previously, it used to be the towel that went down. And oh no, I don't think I put the towel down. I put the pastel box right on top of it because if I put the towel down, the pastel box is going to slide on the towel. This will stop your um, this will stop your pastel box from moving. That's why I use this. And you'll notice when I go plein air painting, I put it on my big easel too, so my pastel box doesn't move. It the stuff like miracle stuff. Whoever invented it is very very smart person. Uh, when I'm out on the boat, I have um, one of the aquatic bags so that, God forbid, if anything fell in the water, well, if anything fell in the water, it probably would sink, but it's not supposed to, but it does keep everything dry. So hopefully that was helpful, um, and hopefully some of you will uh, give a try at um, doing this. Any questions? Is there anything else you want me to show you? This has been really helpful. I thank you very much. Oh, good, good, good. That yeah, you. I, I want to go and make a box. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> That's it. And remember, yeah. these just go look around. <laughs> you know, it, it was amazing how many boxes I had that were just the regular lid that goes on top of it, you know, like a gift box. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's that hinge kind. And, uh, you know, truthfully, even, you know, these are what they use for um, jewelry boxes, even a uh -huh. jewelry box. Wouldn't that be nice? Huh. You know, and that would only be nice. so really seriously. Uh, this is the season, at least on the Cape, all of a sudden we're going to be having a garage sales and estate sales and whatever. Keep your eyes open for boxes that could get turned into a little pastel kit. And you can get those. I'm sorry, you can get those hinges. I think at Michael's in the woodworking section. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You can. Yep, you can get them, Michael's. You can get them um, uh, in uh, you know most uh, hardware stores too. Uh, the, it re, I, again, it's called a 90 degree stop hinge, and it comes in a set of two. And if anyone wants to give a try too, you know, looking at that chain support for, uh, you know, uh, keeping it so that the, the lid doesn't, um, you know, I mean, that one folds, but you could still hinge it here somehow. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's just personal preference. So we've got a couple ideas of ways you could do that. Thank and keep you. Keep it small and compact. And here, yep. let's see, let me just... Uh, I was just going to turn this just a minute. So here I am. I am really here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay. So Hi, yeah, Betsy. any other questions or? Yeah, Betsy, it's Phyllis. Hi. Hi, Phyllis. Um, on that crystal clear, those plastic envelopes, does yep. that, yeah. Um, does that prevent this uh, from the pastel from smudging? Is that? You know what? Uh, th th my caution about using these is one, if I was home, uh, if I put anything in a, one of these uh, plastic bags, I would spray it first. Okay. And uh -huh. then you have to be very careful putting it in 
because as soon as you you know start moving it into the plastic if it's fallen down i think i did show people how to do that one time um you have to be really careful that's why using those clips and making sure that the board mm. on top is keeping everything very uh firm and tight so it's not right. going to move the yeah. other thing with with be. it let me pull this guy up here again so when it comes time to take this guy out okay i could be daring and i could flip it like this and try to do a real quick movement out i'd be more apt to come through or take out the other stuff and i would cut it down the back and i would open um, okay. it like this and then i would take it out because all it takes is doing a, a quick oh, move and <laughs> the plastic will just even if you've sprayed it the, the plastic will move it so you do have to be careful they're great though you know just like i stack them and i just make sure that uh nothing can move so that and, the plastic yeah. doesn't rub on it that's what it is it's that rub all right well this has the, been the, very good thank you very much yeah. okay thank fellas. you Patsy. Glad you came. i i thank, I, you. I, thank, you, thank you so much betsy i i was just wondering the betsy. papers that you brought with you with yeah. those you, you were those sample sizes or or no, I just cut my papers down. Um, I usually okay. buy the, okay. uh, you know, I'm a big fan of yeah. Castell Matt. I do use other ones, but yeah. Castell yeah. Matt's usually my go to. So I get the large okay. sheets and I cut them down. Okay. So, so those, a lot of those are like the ends, you know, when yeah. I've got, you, yeah, know, like, yeah. you know, 10 inches by 20 left over and I just cut it into, you know, eight by 10s or eight, uh, 10 yeah. by 10s. Or, that way you have more so, control over what size. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. This was great. This thank was you. fun. Oh, yeah, thank you so yeah, much. It was fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, thank everyone. You. Uh, summertime, July and August. I'll, you know, certainly try to have um, uh, open studio during uh, the, the summer months, uh, but I, I'm not going to guarantee it depending on what's going on. <laughs> okay. But, no. uh, you know, I'll, you'll, you'll get the information about it. And if anyone's interested, I do have a pastel class that's supposed to start on Tuesday at the Cultural Center. And that's um, a three week class, and it's just for pastel painters and uh, incorporating the use of perspective to add uh, more dimension to your paintings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank, thank you, Beth. Okay. Thank, thank you, everyone. So much. Take care. Have fun. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.